Morning, everyone. It's great to be with you and to be with you if you're uh, watching uh, online. Um, my name is Peter. I'm uh, one of the former pastors, actually, of this church. Um, I'm going to pray to God now uh, as we come and look at uh, why we can trust the Bible. So would you bow your heads in prayer with me? Lord God and Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you for the Bible. We thank you that you have given it to us so that we may know you through your Son, the Lord Jesus. And we pray that you will help us to understand why we can trust the Bible. And we pray that by your Holy Spirit, you will indeed enable us to trust in your word. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, can you trust the Bible? Is it true? And why should you believe it? And why would you believe it? You know, the Bible is an amazing book. It is the best-selling book every year across the world. In fact, they don't even put it on the best-seller list anymore because it's be the same every time. They, the best-seller list always start with the second best-selling book because the Bible every year is the best-selling book. More books have been written about the Bible as well than any other book in history. The Bible is also the most scrutinised book in history. And there are universities and colleges and departments within them all over the world that exist just to study the Bible. But can you trust it? Can you trust that what it says is true? Or is the Bible a story, a fairy tale, a a brilliant masterpiece of fiction? Many people think it is. Or is it true and accurate? Is it reliable? Now, this is crucial because if the Bible is not trustworthy, if it does not have integrity as far as truth is concerned, then the Christian faith is completely useless. It is completely dead. It is a waste of time. On the other hand, if the Bible is true, then it has consequences which are life-changing and eternal. So this talk really is in two parts. The first part is, can you trust the Bible? Just as a piece of literature, as a document of history. And the second part of the talk is, why would you trust what it says? So, can you trust the Bible? The first thing to say is that if the Bible is true, then it must, by definition, be able to stand up to any kind of questioning, any kind of examination. Though you must ask the questions of it that are relevant for what it is. So, for example, it will not answer questions of science any more than a road map will, because that's not what it was, uh, that's not how it is designed and not what it's designed for. The second thing I just want to say as an introduction is that what I'm about to go through with you only touches, just touches, the surface of why we can trust the Bible. And I won't even bring up everything that you can say about that. The reason is there is just so much evidence for the truth of the Bible that people will study it for years and years, decades and decades. So what I'm going to do today is merely introduce you to a few areas that a person could explore if they want to see if they can trust the Bible. So with that, why can you trust the Bible? Well, the key reason is because of the undeniable historical evidence. You know, the Bible talks about many different times and places and people. And studies of history and archaeology have shown that these are all in fact accurate. For example, when the Bible talks about King Herod or Caesar Augustus at a particular time, well, that is verified by many different sources apart from the Bible itself. Many of the places the Bible talks about have even been discovered. And so, in other words, the Bible's account of history 
is completely consistent with all that we know at this point in time of the history of the world and the time of the history, the, the, the time of history that the Bible covers. It is real history. Now, of course, there is not historical evidence for absolutely every person, place or event that the Bible mentions because the contents of the Bible spans thousands of years and obviously some evidence, ancient evidence, does not survive. But may I say, all that has been discovered has verified what the Bible says and there is yet to be a discovery in history or archaeology, that denies anything the Bible says. So the Bible is not made up history. Real places, real people, real events. Secondly, what we read in the Bible, particularly in the New Testament, is firstly the account of those who witnessed it who saw it with their own eyes or those who were close to those witnesses and could be challenged by those witnesses if what they said was not true. Let me explain a little bit more. If you want to know if something happened or not, you ask the people that saw it, don't you? Or you read their account of what they saw. Or you might read the journalist's article who spoke to the witnesses and then wrote an account of what those witnesses saw. Well, that's what we're doing in the Bible. We're reading the accounts of people who were there and who saw with their own eyes. Further again, particularly in the New Testament, what we read about is verified, in most cases, by more than one witness. So if only one person saw something and conveyed it, you might rightly question about whether it was true and accurate. But when it is more than one, sometimes when it is many, and their accounts all line up, then the truth is hard to deny. And when you look at something like, for example, the resurrection of Jesus in the Bible, over 500 people saw him alive after he was crucified. Very hard to deny that. So the Bible, for the most part, is what people at the time saw and heard and experienced. But some people may ask, how do we know that the Bible that we have today is what was written all those years ago? If you have 20 people that copy out, that write out, say, the National Anthem, and then if you compare what those 20 people have written out as the national anthem, and they are the same, then would you say that those are the words of the national anthem? Well, I think you would. Now, 100 years later, if you had those same 20 copies, and they were still all the same, would you still say that those are the words of the national anthem 100 years earlier? Well, of course you would. If... 1,000 years later, you still had those 20 copies, would you say those were the words of the national anthem 1,000 years earlier? Well, of course you would. Now, say that over those 1,000 years, some of the copies that people had written out got a bit damaged. Some might be 80% complete, Uh, Some might be 60% or 40% or 20%, something like that. But there was clearly enough overlap between the sections of the different copies that we have that were still intact and enough copies to compare between the sections that are still intact and you could easily and clearly construct the complete national anthem from it would you say that was the national anthem from 1,000 years before? Well, of course you would. Well, that's how we know the Bible of today is the same as it was thousands of years ago. We can compare many copies made from a similar time, 
but also across hundreds and hundreds of years to see, one, if the copies are the same, and two, if the transmission over those years, those centuries, is accurate. The thing is, though, with the Bible, we don't have 20 copies or parts of copies to compare. No, we have thousands. In fact, tens of thousands. Across the whole Bible, Old and New Testament, we have about 30,000. 30,000 pieces of manuscripts of parts of the Bible to work with. 30,000! And we can compare scripts copied around the time of each other, but also across the centuries to compare, to see how accurate they are. Compare that with the number of manuscripts we have to tell us about other ancient uh, ancient historical people or events. Say, what we know about Julius Caesar and the Gallic Wars. Well, the number of manuscripts we have is about 12. 12. Thousands from the Bible compared to 12. And this is the kind of comparison we have for pretty much all of ancient history compared to the Bible. Tens to thousands. Tens to tens of thousands. If you can believe the accuracy of anything about ancient history, then the Bible is by far and away the most believable. And that means that we can have confidence that what we have now in the Bible was what was penned then. Now look, that's just the start, that's just the tip of the iceberg of the evidence for the integrity of the Bible. Like I said before, the fact is the Bible is the most tested book in history as to its reliability and accuracy. And to this day, no one, no one has shown it to be untruthful or unreliable in any way, historically speaking. Certainly, nothing has disproved it. Even historians and academics who do not believe the Bible testify to its historical integrity. There's a thousand things more to say. But if you want to research more or ask more questions, then please contact the staff on the website. But I invite you to ask as many of your questions as you would like and test the Bible as vigorously as you can. Because if it is true, it has nothing to fear when examined and nothing to hide when questioned. So, go for it. But I want to move on to the question of why would you want to trust it? If you figure out it's true, why would you want to trust it? Well, if it's true, then the Bible has some pretty significant things to say. Things about life, uh, the universe, origins, but I think most importantly about eternity. Why would you believe what it says about those things? Let me tell you a bit more about the Bible. The Bible was written over a time span of 15 to 1600 years. Okay, 15 to 1600 years. There are 40 authors of the Bible. It was written on three continents and in three languages. And yet the Bible is still one cohesive whole. My question is, how is that possible? How is that possible? People who live so far apart in time and space and place, even language, most of them never met each other. Yet they all, yet all the Bible together is one cohesive document. 
How is that possible? How is that humanly possible? Now, sheer possibility and probability would tell us it is not possible. So how is it one whole? Well, the Bible itself tells us. From the first page of the Bible to the last page of the Bible, you'll continually see these words, God said, God said, God said, God spoke, God spoke, God spoke. In uh, that second reading that we were given from 2 Timothy, it says this, All Scripture, Scripture is another way of talking about the Bible, All Scripture is God-breathed. What's God-breathed? God-breathed is the Bible's way of saying God-spoken. See, though the Bible is made up of many parts, from many places, from different time periods, in multiple languages, it's one whole because God is the one who ultimately put it together. Now, I don't want to make any assumptions. The Bible is broadly divided into two parts. We have what we call the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is before, happens before Jesus. The New Testament happens during and after Jesus. Now, in terms of the Old Testament before Jesus, the Bible, uh, the, the Bible tells us from this part in 2 Peter... Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture, Scripture referring to the Old Testament here, came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. That is, even though the Old Testament is written across centuries by many authors, they all wrote as God caused them to. What it's saying is divine author, human scribes. In terms of the New Testament, well, the New Testament, large, large portions of the New Testament, that's during and after Jesus' time, were written by the apostles, those who were with Jesus the whole time during his preaching and teaching ministry. Jesus says to them, um, uh, Jesus will soon be crucified, um, and then later he will go back to God in heaven. But before he goes, he says this, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, so the Holy Spirit from God, will teach you all things... And remind you of everything I have said to you. That is, God will send his Holy Spirit to teach them, not most things, but all things pertaining to what Jesus has taught. But he'll also remind them so they don't forget anything that Jesus says or has taught them. And the purpose of teaching them all things and reminding them of everything is so that they can pass it on. But not only that, the Holy Spirit ensures that what they say is true. In that same conversation Jesus has with them, but when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. Notice there that he refers to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of truth. Point being, the Holy Spirit cannot lie. God cannot lie. So not only does the Holy Spirit teach and guide the apostles in what to say, the Holy Spirit ensures that what they say is both true and complete. So the writing of the apostles in the New Testament are also then authored and completed, or made sure they're complete, by God. A large chunk of the New Testament was also written by Paul, the apostle. And he also tells us that his teaching is by that same spirit, the spirit of truth. 1 Corinthians 2.13, he says, This is what we speak... 
not in words taught us by human wisdom, but words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. So all put together then, both the Old Testament and the New Testament have been written by human hands, yes, but authored and constructed by God through the Holy Spirit. That explains why this book is a whole. And that is why we say that the Bible is God's word. What I'm saying then is that if the Bible is not only true, but it is from God, that's why you would believe it. And I would suggest to you that you would want to believe it. Because in the Bible, God tells us how we can have eternal life in heaven with him. See, the Bible tells us that we have all sinned. And as we saw in the kids' talk, sin is not loving God as we should. And God tells us that the punishment for sin is death, ultimately eternal death, separated from him forever. But the Bible also tells us that God sent Jesus, that God sent Jesus to die on the cross because that would be what pays the penalty of death on our behalf for the sins that we have committed. God tells us in his word that Jesus takes the punishment for us, for our sin. So that is the way that our sins can be forgiven. And it is only the forgiven that can have eternal life in heaven with God. And this forgiveness, because of what Jesus has done when he died for our sins, is appropriated or embraced when a person puts their faith and trust in Jesus, in his death and his resurrection. That's what the Bible says. Or put another way, that is what God says. That is why the Bible has eternal significance, everlasting consequences. My time is up, and I've only touched the surface. And I hope you have lots and lots of questions, because I tell you, the staff would love to answer every single one of them. We are going to have a, question, a short question time, but please don't. Uh, if you don't ask questions during the question time, please still contact the staff uh, through the website. They would love to talk to you more about it. But I plead with you to check it out. Check it out. If it's not true, you've got nothing is lost, is it? If it's not true, it doesn't matter. Nothing is lost. But if it is true, if it is true, then there is either everything to gain or everything to lose eternally. Isn't that worth exploring? Let me pray. Lord God and Heavenly Father, we do again thank you for the Bible. And Father, if there is any among us who are still questioning whether it's true and reliable, please help them to have all their questions answered. And Father, we want to also pray that convinced of its truth, we will all believe your words, put our trust in Jesus, and be saved for eternity. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, say that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom, be thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, and I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with Oh, there we are. Excellent. Uh, I am up here to help Peter, to be his um, servant, assistant guy, uh, to, to kind of feed him some of the questions that we've... Uh, so we've got a few questions on the, the Q&A. Um, if you've got the QR code, you're still watching, um, feel free to keep on sending more questions. And people in here as well, if you have a question, I'll ask you in a second. Um, hmm. Yeah, so uh, let's start with the first one that came in. So, first one that came in, why does the Catholic Bible have more books than the Protestant Bible and how do we, how do we know uh, there aren't missing books or that there are books in the Bible that shouldn't be in the Bible? Okay, so partly about there are extra books in the Catholic Bible, what's going on and how do we know the ones in the Bible are the right ones? Uh, in terms of the Catholic Bible, there are, there are these group of books that were written between what in the Protestant Bible is the Old and the New Testament. A bunch of books written in between that time uh, uh, called the Apocrypha. 
uh, and uh, it's not included in the um, the uh, Protestant Bible. Uh, one because uh, they're not recognised; they weren't recognised by the church. Uh, uh, the, the way that we have the um, Old Testament, uh, I don't want to. This can turn into a really long answer, so I don't want to turn it into a really long answer. But basically, the short answer is that the Old Testament, uh, at the time of Jesus, uh, was, was, was quite settled. And Jesus kind of put his stamp of approval on the Old Testament at the time when he was around, which is what we have in the Protestant Bible. It didn't have those ones that, uh, in that period between Old and New Testament, called the Apocrypha, the, the Catholic Bible, uh, have so that's the short answer. It can be a very long answer, but that's the short answer. What was the next bit of that question? Uh, the next bit was how how can we be sure that the books that we do have in the Bible are the right ones, that they're not missing books, or yeah. that we should leave some out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, very very long answer, but the very short answer to the long answer is that uh, so the Old Testament was settled by the time that Jesus was 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 here on Earth, and he put put his stamp of approval on what the Old Testament was. Uh, the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. Okay? Uh, and, and so, uh, Old Testament is already settled, and Jesus has said, put his stamp of approval. When it comes to the New Testament, uh, around that time, uh, people... Ex- Again, short answer. Uh, the, 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 the Christians and the leadership of the, the church at the time uh, kind of uh, uh, accepted writings as as part of scripture okay now it wasn't until the fourth century that they kind of officially said okay these are the ones for the new testament uh but as you're going in those first four as people are going along in those first century it was already recognized what uh they were in the second and third century there were some other what we call gospels of so and so that were were written, but the church already recognised, and Christians at the time already recognised that those weren't uh, the, the ones by either eyewitnesses or people who are close to the eyewitnesses. Uh, again, there's a take me up on that. That's a very long answer, but that's the short answer. Yep, yep. Thank you. Um, I might chuck in. There's one here that's sort of related, and this is going to be another. You don't need to say for this one. I'll just tell you beforehand. The real answer is a really long answer. Uh, you can give the short one. Okay. Uh, but one related. So, New Testament was written by eyewitnesses, and that's how the church then recognised which yeah. were the books that belong in the New Testament. Yeah. They're the ones written by the eyewitnesses and uh, those close to them. If the Bible's made up of eyewitness accounts, who wrote the Old Testament? Who wrote the Old... Well, there's many authors who wrote uh, the Old Testament. Um, and there are some books of the Old Testament that we... Uh, it's hard to determine exactly who the author was, okay? What we need to do then is say, what does Jesus, the Son of God, say? What did he recognise? And uh, even if historically for some of them, we don't know, uh, or the author is disputed, that Jesus has said, that is Scripture, is what we go on. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, there are, I'm going to try and combine a couple of questions here as well because there are a couple of questions about... Um, so, there's one, if, if God is so good, how come God doesn't speak to us more in the modern day? So, God, if God spoke in the Bible, why doesn't He speak to us more in the modern day? And there's another question about prophets. Are there any prophets today? Uh, so, Mormons, for example, the Mormon church believes that prophecy, you know, is that God keeps on revealing more and more and more today. So they're sure. kind of related. Does God speak sure. today and how? God, God has spoke to us in the modern day. Absolutely. Um, uh, he's spoken to us right here. It might be an ancient document, but it speaks to the modern day. There is nothing in the Bible that doesn't speak to us right now, right today. Uh, that first reading that was read uh, from Hebrews chapter 1, if I can read that, uh, just a part of it to you again. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, but in these last days, last days here refers to uh, uh, the period between the first coming of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus. He hasn't come yet, so this is the last days, okay? 
In these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, the Lord Jesus. So what Jesus said back then is still relevant for today. What was the second part of the question? Uh, I think that was... Oh, more prophets. Oh, yeah, more prophets. Okay, uh, same answer. In these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So that means that what, Je- what Jesus says, that's it. He doesn't need people to say any more than what Jesus has already said. Hmm. Okay, so uh, would it be fair to say then that just looking at that Hebrews passage, uh, if we were to have more prophets, you'd kind of be going, why, why do you want to go backwards? You know, Je- Jesus, God spoke through these human prophets in the past Correct. That was all leading up to the big thing, which is Jesus. So to expect more prophets is like, well, why do you want to go you know, downhill again? Well, they wouldn't be telling us anything more than what Jesus yep. already told us. But I'd rather listen to Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to go out here to make sure that I don't ignore the people in the room. So any questions from, uh, from you, Mob? Any questions from the floor, as they say? Okay, are the, so in terms of the manuscripts of the Bible that have been discovered, those 30,000-odd manuscripts, um, are, there, are there differences between different manuscripts? Yes, there are. <laughs> so what happens is like, the short like, answer, we've right? got 30,000 manuscripts, about 24,000 for the New Testament, uh, 5,000, 6,000 for the uh, uh, Old Testament. Uh, and you'll, you'll find that... Um, uh, 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 there, there are times where one copy might, you know, have a have the like the word the, and um, you know uh, another one might not have the word the, and stuff like that. And you go, oh, there's a difference. So what you do is you line them all up, and for a particular passage, it might be ten, it might be a hundred, might be a thousand, and and you have a look at them, and uh, there are ways of testing uh, which one was probably more correct than the other as you compare them across different manuscripts at the same time and di- different manuscripts across time. And, and th- th- there are ways, you know, of, of work again, a long, long answer for how they do that, but there are ways of working out which is uh, the, the best attested reading, if I can put it like that. Okay, so uh, there are some differences, but you'd say the differences are tiny little things. It's not a tiny know, little things, and yep. in in most cases, you can work out pretty reliably which is which mm. is the best reading. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll go with this. Qu- I'm not qu- entirely sure what this question is getting at. If the Bible doesn't include everything, isn't it like picking and choosing specific things? How can this be reliable? I I wonder if that has to do with Everything. What you said at the beginning about um, it's not like a science book, it doesn't tell us about science. Sure. Maybe? I don't know. Mm, not sure. Uh, if, if you want to leave that question because you're not, then that's fine. But that's what the question said. If it doesn't include everything, isn't it like picking and choosing specific things? Yeah, the, the, the Bible, it, God did not intend the Bible to answer every question of science, for example. Um, uh, it, the, the God wrote the Bible so that we would know about Jesus. Um, and so it's not so much picking and choosing, but it's telling us what we need to know. In order, So again, the second reading from Timothy says, one of the bits I didn't read from that passage was verse 15. If I can find you, there's, someone's moved to Timothy, oh, here he is. Uh, 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 so we read, all scriptures God breathed, verse 16. Verse 15 says... How from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. That's why God wrote the Bible, gave us the Bible. So, you know, how, how, you know, when you throw a ball into the air and, you know, why it drops back to the ground. The Bible wasn't designed to answer questions of gravity and physics. It was, it was written so that we would understand how to know God through faith in Jesus Christ. And so it gives us everything that we need to know about that okay uh any more questions from the floor and then i'll go with one more question last chance okay uh one last question again once again we can't answer everyone's questions um on this sorry about that i will 
try, I'll try and get back to these. Um, if you asked one of these questions and we haven't answer it, answered it, uh, I'll try and get back to them and give a few answers of my own on some of the ones that we didn't cover. Uh, but last one. Uh, I'm Catholic and never, I was never really taught if the Bible was true. I learnt the typical stuff, I presume, of um, you know, what the Roman Catholic Church teaches. Uh, should I keep following their teachings? I think I'm a good person. Okay, so I was never really taught this stuff about, is the Bible true, should we believe it? I was taught these teachings. Uh, should I keep following their teachings? I think I'm a good person. Follow the teachings of the Bible, okay? Uh, uh, not the Catholic Church. Uh, follow the teachings of the Bible. Um, the Catholic Church has other, if I can put it this way, Catholic Church has other authorities apart from the Bible. And so when the Catholic Church teaches, they will teach not just from the Bible, but these other authorities that are not from God. And so I would say, stick to what the Bible teaches. And anything you learn, make sure whoever you're learning it from can actually show you from the Scripture where it comes from. And not just show you from the Scripture where it comes from, but look at it yourself and say, is what they're saying about what the Scripture says true? Um, just don't believe it because, even, even here, just don't believe it because someone Absolutely. says it to you. But yes, the Catholic Church has other, other, uh, other, uh, uh, other volumes, really, <laughs> of teaching that they will teach you from which do not come from the Bible. I mean, it is worth saying that the, the Catholic Church uh, teaches and believes that the Bible is fully God's Word. It does and, believe the Bible is fully yep. God's Word, but they don't believe it is only yep. the Bible yep. that is yep. God's Word. Yep. And um, absolutely, what, what Peter said, don't follow the teachings of the Catholic Church. Don't follow the teachings of St. Barnabas Bosley Park either, just because we're teaching it. Um, that's why we always want people to have their Bibles out and yep. uh, get together and read the Bible and um, yep. check us out and call us and out. And question us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's God's Word, not our Word. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Peter, and um, thank you for sending questions in. Like I said, I'll try and get back to some of them. I'll hand back to Paul.